Joshua Bennett is the author of three books of poetry and literary criticism, The Sobbing School, Being Property Once Myself, and Ode. He is the Mellon Assistant Professor of English and Creative Writing at Dartmouth College, and his next book of creative nonfiction, Spoken Word, A Cultural History, is forthcoming from Knopf. Joshua Bennett's criticism radically expands his ideas of what it is to be alive in the world, reshuffling hierarchies of knowledge and power and hinting at a new way of being. His poetry is piercingly intelligent. There is so much yearning and emotion alongside a mesmerizing musical craft. It welcomes us intimately into the speaker's powerful consciousness, into the landscape of his family and his outsiderhood. Bennett takes up the legacy of W.E.B. Du Bois in this fluid movement between genres, illuminating what it means to see things as they are and to call them by their most merciless names. You are so articulate with your hands, she says, and it's the first time the word doesn't hurt. I respond by citing something age inappropriate from Aristotle, drawing mostly from his idea that hands would make us human every gesture the embodiment of our desire for invention or care. And I'm not sure about that last part, but it seemed like a polite response at the time, and I'm not accustomed to not needing to fight. If my hands speak with conviction, then blame my stupid mouth for its lack of weaponry or sweetness. I clap when I'm angry because it's the best way to get the heat out. Pop says that my words are bigger than my mouth, but these hands can block a punch build a bookcase, feed a child, and when's the last time you saw a song do that? Barber Song. Postmodern blackness blacksmith, straight razor reshaping self-esteem. You dream in geometries unreachable by any other means. Speak and entire phrases abandon standard American etymology hence. You liberate waves from the sea, corn rose from the cornfield, reclaim fade, so I now hear the word and imagine only abundance. Caesar never meant anything to me, but a cut so close you could see the shimmer of a man's thinking. You were how we first learned to bend language built to unmake us, accept implausible risk, some much older man, shaver in hand like a baton full of wasp gossip, asking, with the grain or against, and the question feels damn near existential, given this is the only place we can live in such thoughtless proximity to another person's open hands, be held by the face, ask outright to be made glamorous, shaped by your polymathic brilliance, you bi-weekly psychoanalyst, first stop before funeral, before wedding and block party alike, you soothsayer, cooing children to calm as they sit in the chair for the first time, as still a storm as one might reasonably expect. You ethicist, defending hairlines at all cost, your vigilance keeping online and otherwise slander at bay. Philosopher King, thesaurus in the drawer, dominoes and scotch and barbasol adorning your countertop right above the chorus line of clippers swaying to the clamor of checkmates and offhand insults now filling the shop each moving as if the unfettered locks of some great metal monster some faraway watcher and you guardian of it all clean as a pope